Hello and welcome back to part two of my 5GBE tests. Today we're continuing our look, look at 5 gigabit Ethernet in the real world scenarios and we're utilizing the TVS672N. But it's worth mentioning there are a variety of 5GBE solutions from QNAP. Now today we're going to be utilizing Steam. I've already done a couple of videos in the past showing you guys exactly how to set up a NAS to be your Steam library, the device that you play your Steam games from and therefore allowing you to have your archive, your Steam library of games, they're kept long term and not at the whim of some games companies that will remove a game from um, store, the Steam store and therefore lose your access to it long term. So what we're looking at right now is playing games directly from this NAS. We've got a 1GB connection and a 5GB connection. Now it's worth highlighting straight off the bat that this has got three different storage mediums inside. We have a single Seagate Iron Wolf Pro drive a 14 tb on its own we have another storage area with a raid 5 uh, that's utilizing three 4 tb seagate iron wolf standard drives in a raid 5 environment and finally we have got two seagate iron wolf 110 ssds in a raid 1 environment now the game we're going to be utilizing is payday 2 um, it is a fps shooter game about bank heists and stuff is very very good we had to kind of limit the game we're going to be using for this test today largely because uh, even without the screen recording software and we're going to have to record off camera because the laptop doesn't have sufficient gpu and power for both the software and screen recording but we've had to utilize this software for this just because of the laptop in question but it's worth highlighting that even this game will run very very poorly over one gigabit ethernet once you go higher than that and hence where 5gbe and that adapter comes in that is where we start to see performance benefits. Now, the basis of this video is to solve the following two questions. The first one, does a game playing over 5 GBE run better than a game running over 1 GBE? Because the majority of people who have looked at NAS to solve their Steam library problems have all encountered the same problem, that 1 gigabit Ethernet connectivity, which is the standard network interface, is just not sufficient for modern games. And even if this game isn't classed as a modern game, it's worth highlighting the bigger, you know, your GTAs, your, you know, uh, your huge games at the moment, all those enormous games to the end of 2019, you know, modern warfare, and I know there isn't a new Battlefront this year, but there's bound to be another one. All of these big games, the amount of transit of data that has to be, you know, accessed in real time and cached is enormous. And that's why an external solution with all that storage potential is viable, as well as when you've got RAID solutions, which have got multiple drives. So once again, first question, does it run better over, 1G, uh, over 5 GBE than it does over 1 GBE? The second thing we want to look at is how much data is actively used, because there is a question that once the data is in the memory or or cached or locally cached then the NAS is relatively superfluous as soon as the game begins so we want to see how much data is accessed over the Ethernet whilst the game is running not just an initial boot now we even though we have those mixed media types inside the ones I want to really focus on are the single drive and the RAID 5 environment because SSDs in the NAS don't really solve anything the whole point of using a NAS for your Steam library was because to have the games on your internal storage requires super fast access like SSD, which are really, really expensive and limit your storage potential. That's why we're looking at NAS for Steam libraries. So concentrating on the SSD bays, we're not gonna do that so much because if you're looking at NAS, you're looking at hard drives for a Steam library in the very least. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our way over to the screen and don't be surprised if we're gonna switch to an over the shoulder view because of the screen recording software OBS and its impact on performance. But let's make our way to the screen. Right, so here we are on the desktop here of this PC. As mentioned, we are going to be utilizing over the shoulder recording here because of OBS down here utilizing too many system resources. So the first thing we want to do is run a test with um, the game running from the 1GBE connection. Uh, once again, I do apologize uh, if there's any humming there in the background. Unfortunately, because of the proximity of the NAS and the cabling, you will pick up the noise of the NAS in the background, so I do apologize for that. But if we go into the settings menu here, and then from there, we can make our way into the setup of this device. We can go into the downloads library, go into our Steam library, and we can take a look at all the available folders here. Now, 
as you can see, we've got a multitude of Steam libraries here. Now, I do hope a number of you watched part one of this series of videos where I talked about um, setting up 1GBE and 5GBE connections to all of those network drives. If you didn't catch that video, uh, maybe stop watching and make your way back to the previous video because this is the one where we talked about our 1GBE and 5GBE setups. We have three shared drives with the initial ones all detailing the one gigabit ethernet connection all ending in uh, 147 so xyz are all 1gb connected network drives on that nas and rst are all 5gb connected network drives so straight away as we can see here drive x is that single 14 tb hard drive over 1 tbe and that is our default directory right now so We've already cleared the cache before this. We've installed the game on that directory. There's the size of the game, 6.18 um, gig. We can go there, click OK, and we can start running this game. Now, if we make our way in, we view the game's library, we can take a look at this game running. And we will have the task manager running in the background on this, just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like. But let's launch this game, and we'll run that in the background. We will invite the game to launch as soon as it's ready to play. And we will play the demo and we'll also have the screen recorder up uh, not the screen recorder the task manager giving us real-time information about the network activity we've got network cpu and memory let's move the game there and take a look at the utilization of this game in real time so we know we're looking at the game playing do take a note of all of the network activity happening on screen. So again, I'm probably going to mute this game because otherwise it is going to get annoying as we play. But let's make our way into the game, skip the options. And what we want to do is take a good look here. We want to look at payday here on this side. So we'll open that one up. And we also want to look at Steam there in the background. So we'll make our way back into the game, skip the options, and straight away we are starting to see little spikes of network activity, but nothing too aggressive. Uh, let's go into the safe house of this game. Now, the first thing that hits me is the loading time here. This is taking way too long to load that first screen. That is supposed to be nigh on instantaneous. From there, we move forward, and there's the loading of the game. Just watching it there, the network activity has spiked quite substantially. Steam in the background isn't doing too much, but we have seen a spike of network activity there, well in excess of 1 to 200 megabits per second. So now, using WASD, which unfortunately due to the layout of the way I'm standing isn't great, we can look at the game happening in real time. Remember, this is running off of a single hard drive right now, and this single hard drive installed in uh, no RAID environment, obviously because it's a single drive, is being accessed over one gigabit ethernet. And then what we'll do in a second is we'll get, I don't know, a minute or two into this game, and then we will make our way back into the user interface of Steam, and from there, we will run over 5GBE to see if there's any difference. This is asking us to answer the phone, which we've done. And again, I know you can't really hear the game. On the right-hand side there, we're watching CPU utilization. One thing that's particularly interesting is watching the memory utilization. Now, this would be the case with any game that we play. We're just waiting for this door to open here. And from there, we can grab our gear and this will let us continue into the game. And again, we're not seeing too much network activity going crazy there. We're seeing enough to warrant the game continuing. We'll get that set up, and we'll make our way out into the courtyard of the game. We'll carry on there. We've still got all the stats happening on screen in real time. We're waiting for a doorway to open here. And we're outside. So again, most of the assets have been loaded at the beginning into the cache and that memory. Go there. We'll load into that. We're not going too far into the game. We'll try and do some other assets here. Maybe just the way up to this point. We'll do F. And we grab that. Perhaps switch weapons. And just kind of take a good scope of the area that we are in. 
But from there, we can see that the game is running not so bad over 1GBE. There's definite lag. There's one thing I will say is the response time between the buttons I'm clicking and the movement of what I'm seeing on screen is there is most certainly a little bit of lag. But for now, we're now going to come out of the game. Then we're going to uninstall this game and then reinstall the game on the same drive over 5GBE. In theory, there will be little difference because it's the same hard drive. But what we're interested in seeing is there going to be a notable difference. So from here, we're going to right click and we're going to uninstall this game. As the game is uninstalling, we will then make our way back into the Steam library, go back into the settings, and now we're going to select exactly the same drive as before, but this time over 5GBE. So this is the drive here, exactly the same drive as before, and now we're going to make this one the default library. Then we're going to go back into Payday and we're going to install that game so let's have a look there we want to go back into our available games been a while since i used steam as you can tell we'll go to the games library collection and we'll get the game installed right so we're back onto the desktop here i've moved or re-downloaded the game onto the 5GBE mapped network drive. If we go into the settings menu here, we can take a look under downloads, go to the Steam library, and you can see that now the R drive is where this demo is being kept. If we make our way into the map, uh, the map network drives, you can see that the R drive is the IP ending 142, and if we make our way into the QNet Manager, you can see that 142 is indeed the 5 gigabit Ethernet NAS connection. Now, I've also disconnected the 1GBE uh, connection on this device. So just to make sure that we're only utilizing the 5 gigabit connection, that's why the other drives have disappeared. And prior to the installation of this, I did clear the download cache to make sure that we were dealing with a completely fresh installation. What we want to see now is how well is this game going to run? Are we going to see increased activity here and will the game load any faster? So let's take a look. Let's keep that open. And what we want to look at really is when the game icon appears here, we want to see the network traffic and activity. Let's move that drive over there. And now I'm just going to have a look at the menus to see how well this runs. So we're going to move that into those options there. And straight away, it does seem to be running not only quicker, but more fluid. Obviously, it's very early doors. We are seeing uh, more consistent network activity than we saw last time. And once again, this time we are going into the safe house. And the first time we did this earlier on, you can see it's removed a lot of the data, so we have to start. We're going to go into that safe house there. And the first thing we want to look at is how quickly it loads up that first menu. So... Obviously, this pop-up has now ruined that a little bit there. So we want to remove that pop-up as easy as possible. But right now, it's already been that might bit quicker, and this is only a demo. But let's head in to the game. Let's see how quickly it loads. So we're going to leave that running there in the background. And again, this time loading was nigh on instantaneous. There was definitely a difference there between the two versions of this game. And that is just something you will experience while playing over 5GBE. Once again, this is a demo of a relatively old game because of the capture software I am utilizing. But I'm definitely seeing increased performance when it comes to 5GBE connectivity to this NAS. And if you are looking for something for a Steam library, I do think this is still going to be more than enough. What will be interesting to see at the end of this video is a comparison of the results we've seen so far. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to wrap things up rather than carry on moving forward and through the game because let's be honest, you're only going to see me playing a, once again, relatively old game. What I'm going to do is fast forward to after this where I can compare and contrast the 1GBE and 5GBE results here on screen for you. So let's fast forward to that now. Right, so we've got these two instances of Steam running off the NAS running at exactly the same time from our earlier recordings. Now, there may be a slight echo, I apologize for that. I've got an uh, open area server environment right now, but I've got to say, immediately during the testing, 
the 5GBE connection was certainly more responsive. And even now, looking at the behavior of both of these two instances of Steam games being accessed, the task manager is definitely relaying more information a lot quicker on the 5GBE connection, with a lot more data being spread out in the first instance over 1GBE, obviously, because of the one gigabit limit. Another thing was the responsiveness throughout the entire procedure that I have felt a lag factor with regards to response times between menus and when I was acting on the up, down, left, right, WASD controls when the game took progress. As the game loads on both of these instances, it became immediately apparent that the loading times on the 1GBE was certainly slower than that of the 5. Although I did have to, you know, I left a slight delay there with regards to clicking the start option, you can immediately see, even from initial boot, that the game does run a great deal more smoothly on the 5GBE because of so much more data being prepared and made available in data packets on the 5GBE connection. So, in the case of this 1GBE versus 5GBE, certainly we can make a case that the game will run smoother at the outset over 5GBE with a more level playing field later on and of course with bigger and more modern games coming out and data packets getting bigger this is obviously a test that only applies to smaller cases but I will be doing bigger cases soon otherwise thank you so much for watching I hope you've enjoyed this video I'm going to wrap things up now and if you do have any further questions about running games on a Steam environment over a network attached storage device and your network do let me know but otherwise thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next test